everyone, welcome back to Baltimore. I'm Katie and this is Ross. And today we're gonna to talk and dive further into how to build a better craft beer menu. So in a previous episode, we told you about the three styles you absolutely have to have if you're opening a restaurant to begin with. Um, that was like the 101 course. So now we're gonna dive into the 201 course and Ross is gonna give us some more examples of um, the next level, if you will. So just to recap, remember from the last episode, the three styles you wanna have initially are gonna be a light beer, um, something that's kind of malty or dark, and then something that's a little hoppy as well. So Ross, run us through what you've got here. We've got a lot of beers and a lot of glassware. Right, yeah, there's some overlap here with the previous episode, uh, but they're general new categories. Uh, the first would be Belgians, and Belgian beer culture is very broad and there's a lot of styles involved, but I just brought a couple that if you're just getting your beer program rolling, these are gonna be safer bets. Uh, next would be seasonals, maybe an even broader term, seasonal beer, depending on the time of the year, could be totally different. Uh, I brought one that's a winter style that's on its way out, and then one that's a spring beer that just hit the market here in Maryland. Um, but seasonal beers always sell really well because their limited nature inherently makes people want them more. Want to try them, absolutely. Yeah, and then finally we have imperial styles. Uh, so this is you know a little bit of uh, risky territory, but if you adjust your pour sizes and your serving sizes to coincide with the higher alcohol content, you should be fine, and it's going to add a really unique option on your beer menus. Cool, so let's get started. Let's get in some beer. So uh, what do we have here with the Belgians? So I brought a Belgian wit beer. This is just your general wheat beer from Belgium. Uh, it's a specific yeast strain that makes it uniquely uh, citrusy. And this one has oranges added. This is the Clementine from Clown Shoes. Um, and there's also coriander in this style. So it's a, it's a nice alternative to your German or American wheat beers. Uh, it's gonna have the same sort of unfiltered cloudy nature. So I'm using the wheat beer glass from Libby. Uh, the shape we've talked about before, it's sort of synonymous with the Hefeweizen, but a wheat beer is a wheat beer and it's going to accent the same characteristics that we like cool. in a Hefeweizen. So, Thinner down here, lets a little bit more light pass through and shows you just how cloudy it is. Bulges out and then tightens up to accentuate the nose a little bit. Great, so for my front of the house guys, this is a great great news for us because I can use the same glass I have to have for my wheat beers, also for this Belgian as well. So great news on that front. Yeah, and we're actually using another um, more general use glass for the Saison as well. So Saisons are actually a broad style in and of themselves. Uh, the one that I've brought is from Uinta, and we're actually going to use just a general ale glass um, from Bormioli Rocco. But the nice belling out at the bottom here, the tulip, uh, these are things that you could use a lot for a lot of beers, but tulips are actually uh, sort of synonymous with a lot of Belgian styles. So it's again a visual cue and it's going to enhance the guest experience. Cool, so let's start cracking open some beers. Um, but while you're doing that, it, this tulip shaped glass, like Ross said, is gonna be similar to a Nonic pint. I know when I see a Nonic pint, I'm gonna get a porter perhaps or a stout. Um, so with this, I know I'm either gonna get, you know, maybe a multi or a hoppy beer, excuse me, or I'm gonna get a Belgian, just like you said. So that looks pretty darn good. <laughs> Right, so because it's sort of squeezed in here, you're gonna get nice, thick, white head. Um, you can see the, the color is actually lighter than I thought it would be, but it's really, really good clarity. It smells, smell that. Oh yeah, It has awesome. white grape must and gooseberries. That's why I chose this one. It just sounds unbelievable, and everyone I've talked to has said it's great. Yeah, the that's, jury's in. Yeah, that, that's great. It's got, it is kind of grapey, and it's got some good berry stuff going on, but it's also a little spicy, uh, like a lot of Saisons are. Cool. That's excellent. 
All right, well, let's hurry up and get through the rest of them so I can start drinking as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so up next, we've got the seasonals. Um, this is the Poet, which is from New Holland in Michigan. It's an oatmeal stout. Cool. Uh, we've talked about stout and stouts and porters along with the Nonic pint before. This shape is synonymous with these styles. Um, it's always a good bet to use this glass because, again, the, the visual cue enhances the guest experience. When they see the beer on the tray, they know which one is theirs. They know it's coming. And it's just got great ergonomics and feel in the hand, as we've talked about before. This one's also from Bormioli Rocco, and uh, it's cool because it's the No Nix Pine, N-O-N-I-X, -N uh, so that's cool. I like that touch. Uh, and then for our next seasonal, it's a spring seasonal from Devil's Backbone, it's Cranberry Goza, and a Goza is a style that's like a little tart, a little salty. They've gone an extra step and added fruit, uh, cranberry, and it's just got a really great color, which we're gonna see in a second. And I've actually decided to use this Pilsner glass from Bormioli Rocco. Uh, I decided to go this route just because of the thin body of the glass. And that's going to really show off that color. As you see down at the bottom, it's very little beer. And then up top, it sort of allows a little bit more depth. So it's going to accent the color. It's going to be lighter in the bottom and, and richer up top. Well, I'll actually open that now. Cool. So for those of you at home uh, who are watching and want to get your hands on some Bormioli Rocco, uh, in the hospitality segment, it's distributed by Steelite. So make sure to check out those reps um, and ask for that as well. Oh, yeah, that color is awesome. Yeah, it's really unique. And luckily, they've, they've made the can a similar color to the liquid, which I always like. But the, the head is, is white, but it's got a little bit. And it's got a tinge of. A, a little bit of pink. And you'll see down at the bottom, it's like almost clear. You can't really see much color. But as it gets a little bit richer up top, it just looks unbelievable. It's, it's like a pink orange blend. And you smell it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can smell the cranberry, but also. I'll, you can tell there's uh, some saline characteristics in there. It does have a decent amount of salt. And it's super refreshing. Cool. Good so brunch great, beer. Yeah, I was going to say, great to bring us into spring and try and get rid of some of this cold weather. Yep. All and right. then... We've got Imperials left, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, these are the most fun to sample uh, because they're the highest alcohol content. So I've gone with one hoppy and one malty option. We've got a double IPA. This is from Alpine Beer in San Diego. Uh, they just recently partnered with Green Flash. So Maryland just got this brewery. Uh, their beer is excellent and I've been real hyped on them. This one's called Pure Hoppiness. Uh, the happy hoppy puns abound from this brewery. and. I've decided to go with a nice, uh, delicate 12 ounce tulip. Uh, this is from Libby. This is the Renaissance class. Very um, fancy. And yeah, it's, it's got a nice, nice thin stem, but a sturdy base. And the smaller size is really what you, what you need. Uh, you want a tulip, you want to concentrate that great nose, but you don't want to pour 16 ounces of an 8% double IPA. Uh, right, and we don't want to go with a, a tulip like this where I'm, it's going to look almost empty and your guests aren't going to be pleased with it. So a smaller glass helps with that. Exactly. So you need to uh, find glassware that's going to accommodate these uh, sometimes ludicrous <laughs> alcohol contents, as we'll see in the next beer. Uh, the bottle shop I work for is the number one Weyerbacher account in Maryland. So we just got this in and we got a ton of it. We're all hyped on it. This is Sunday morning stout. Uh, this beer has been getting a lot of hype from all the beer nerds and it's a, it's a really perfect storm of things that people get excited about in the beer community. Uh, so it's, an, it's a stout and it's got a lot of rich coffee notes to it, but then they age it in bourbon barrels. So uh, it's 11.3% alcohol, this batch. And, uh, That's enough to put me back to bed on a Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's big, but it's delicious. And so what I've decided to do, uh, because 
I really thought the, the barrel aging lended itself to a much smaller glass. And then we have this excellent glass from Stozel, uh, that the Glen Cairn glass, which is synonymous with whiskey. It's six and a half ounces, and usually it's not all the way filled up. But in this case, you could fill it nearly to the top. And six ounces would be a great option for something this strong and this honestly expensive. That way you're not charging your, your guests for this ludicrous, oh, we did 12 ounces and it's $12 for a single beer. You know, not everybody's gonna be down with that. But using a smaller pour size allows your guests to drink more responsibly and allows you to offer sort of a, a different experience than what they might be used to. This is also a great sampling glass if you're doing flights. Um, just because of the size, it's a really great shape as well. And we're actually going to get into this one. Absolutely. So this glass is synonymous with whiskey around the world, whether you're in Scotch or whether it is whiskey or even just here in America with, with bourbon. So to have a bourbon aged barrel beer in this just kind of clicks. Um, also, obviously, a very different look and feel for your guests as this is being brought to the table, really to kind of highlight everything the brewery has put into that beer. So I'm um, really excited to kind of see that difference on, on the table. That one's got a great color, too. Yeah, su super stops. like rich tan head. You, you don't even need to put your face <laughs> up to it. You can smell it from, yeah, uh, from a mile awesome. away. <laughs> oh no, I just went for it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so um like I said, tons of coffee. It is a little a little woody from the, the barrels right. and good whiskey notes as well. It is really similar to, you know, a shot of whiskey in a cup of coffee, which is really nice. <laughs> Always good for a Sunday morning. That's right. So with that, we're going to start cracking into some of these beers. So um, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next time. Uh, follow us on Instagram at BLDG46 or shoot us some notes either at Ross at TabletopJournal.com or Katie at TabletopJournal.com. So thanks again for tuning in. And remember, Tabletop Matters. Cheers.